Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, here to recap the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Kansas City Chiefs week number five matchup. Give out position grades and give out players of the week. And for the offensive side of the ball, trust me, it's another hard week on who we are actually going to be giving that game ball too but before we hop into this your boy is going to be making some tree talks merch yes ladies and gentlemen a couple of people in the stream yesterday said that if they if i were to make some merch they would cop it they would buy it they would wear it i already got a couple of ideas i uh, i just in the stream decided that i'm gonna start calling my fan base trebs tribe so we got some trebs tribe merch we got we're gonna make some original tree talks merch uh we're gonna make some funny ones like i say oh my goodness in the in the chat a lot so probably quotes oh my goodness picture of my face maybe and then maybe like me hitting a vape or just my vape that says trebs vape you know i got i got a lot of ideas uh brewing in the head i'm also going to be setting up a patreon account so if you don't want to look ridiculous in some treep talks merch maybe you could go ahead and donate to the patreon account we are going to be doing we are only going to be using this money to make this channel better whether that be a new camera a new microphone new editing software me paying somebody that's actually elite at editing videos to make everything uh smooth and good for you guys so if that's something you're interested leave your opinions in the comment section down below but without further ado ladies and gentlemen let's dive right into the video i am tree from bigjareport.com this is the jacksonville jaguars versus kansas city chiefs week number five Recap, position grades, and players of the week. Alrighty, before we get this game started, let's state the obvious. The Kansas City Chiefs were able to come out on top, so congratulations to the Chiefs. The Chiefs are the real deal. Uh, Patrick Mahomes is one fun kid to watch turn up, tearing up an elite defense like the Jacksonville Jaguars is not easy to do. Although he didn't really tear us up. We'll get into that later. I know Chiefs fans are just going to get mad that I said that. Chiefs fans have been big mad at me uh, since my live reaction video dropped, which has 3,000 views, the most views I have on a single video. So thank you guys for that. But it's mostly just big mad Chiefs fans saying, oh boy, you better get that Crow video ready. I'm going to recap the game. Your boy didn't talk any shit. Literally the whole week I was like, Man, Patrick Mahomes is the real deal. If we lose this game, I'm not going to be surprised because this Chiefs offense is crazy electric and our offense is crazy flat, as you're going to hear here in a little bit. But, so I didn't talk any shit. Congratulations to the Chiefs fans. Be easy in the comments. Don't be fucking ridiculous, please. Anyway, let's break down the Jaguar offense first. And uh, just some notes before we break down position by position. We hella went away from the run game too early. I think Doug Moreau and Nathaniel Hackett, when we got into an early hole and we didn't go for it, I mean, we didn't take the field goal when we should have took the field goal to be down. I think it was either 10-3 to or 7-3. to uh, That's a game changer. And when we decided to go for it, we didn't get it. <laughs> like, that. That that's really when the momentum swung, and that's when, you know, Blake Bortles started throwing the ball a lot. And that's not how this Jags team's going to win. You know, we got to keep running the football. We got to be able to go out there and establish a run game with or without Leonard Fournette. And that's just something that we didn't do this week and something that we usually do and something that we preach. But let's talk about the running back. Speaking of that, TJ Yeldon uh, had 10 rushes for 56 yards and a couple of catches for 69 yards. So over 100 yards all purpose for TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon continues to put together an impressive season and he stays healthy and he stays healthy like he's on the field you know he's reliable he's been that guy he's been uh offensive player of the week two or three times this year um and he leads the table for the most offensive mvps this this year uh at least in my opinion so right now he's kind of the leading member of the offense at least again in my opinion you know what the games that we put together you know games we lose uh usually is where tj yeldon decides to come in and be that player of the week um, and, you know, games we win, it's usually somebody else with the big numbers, you know, either Bortles or a wide receiver, you know, things of that nature. But, you know, TJ Yeldon wasn't the only story. TJ Yeldon did have a great game, though, not, not taking anything away from Yeldon. We did go away from him way too soon. He only had 10 rushes. You know, he should have had a lot more than that, but only 10 rushes. Brandon Wilds also got into the game. And Brandon Wilds, man, he was getting the preseason going up against guys of his caliber, but he is not an NFL running back. He struggled. He looked scared out there. He completely missed his blocking assignment on one play. 
and you know Brandon Wilds is not gonna help uh, for this injury we're about to discuss my boy my boy Corey Grant everybody say rest in peace Corey Grant in the comments section because that's my one of my favorite players on the Jags offense and he had a left leg injury that unfortunately is gonna be ending his season this year now it's hard on me I think that's hard on a couple of people to see Corey Grant go down because he's one of the uh, fan favorites at least uh, you know he has kind of a cult following but uh, Corey Grant man he's out and he's a free agent next year so you know that that kind of seals his deal he probably will not be coming back to Jacksonville he's gonna go somewhere else and be a stud and I'll be all for that I'm all for Corey Grant having a successful career but you know, you see the Jags, they don't like to bring a lot of people back with injuries. You've seen it with Allen Robinson. You know, Allen Robinson's kind of a different uh, beast, though. You know, obviously, it was our number one receiver, and Corey Grant's kind of just a rotational running back uh, that has big play ability. But I kind of think that puts the nail in the coffin as far as Corey Grant coming back next year. And I also want to go back to the five things we learned about uh, when we played the Jets. We definitely need Leonard Fournette. If, like I'm not gonna say I'm not gonna be as bold to say that if Leonard was there we'd win the game, but we'd be able to actually run our offense and run the plays that we were supposed to run if Leonard Fournette was in there. I don't know when Leonard's coming back. You know, like literally this hamstring injury could be like he's either come back next week or he's not coming back for the rest of the season. And you know that's hard. That's hard. Anyway, let's get a final grade before we talk a little bit more about something that, you know, the whole Jags community is talking about as far as running backs go. I'm going to be giving the running backs a C on the day. TJ Yeldon had a good game receiving and running the ball, but, you know, not enough was shown. You know, I think the Jags only ran the ball 17, 18 times, and, you know, it went away from it. So, you know, that's a, that's a C for the running backs. This whole offensive group uh, as an offense isn't going to be getting a lot of high grades because this offense really failed to show up today. Now the thing that I was talking about that the whole community is really discussing is that the Jags should trade for a running back. Now I completely disagree with this. I think that Leonard Fournette is not necessarily going to be out for the season. I think he's going to come back when we need him the most and there's a couple of free agent running backs that the Jags have worked out that I think could fill in and be decent backs for us uh, throughout the season. Matthew Days, you know, from Cleveland. Uh, he would have had a roster spot for Cleveland if Cleveland didn't have such you know, depth at the running back position. And before you say, oh, he's a Browns running back, how good could he be? Look at the running back depth that the Browns have. Carlos Hyde, uh, Nick Chubb, and Duke Johnson. That's one of the best running back communities uh, in the NFL right now. Don't even at me. And Matthew Days just couldn't find a spot on that roster because those are three uh, good running backs. I think that he would come in and he would be able to <clears throat> kind of be a third down back kind of guy. We're not. I don't think we need to trade for a starter. I think that's just where everybody uh, in the Jaguar community is kind of being ridiculous here. We don't need to trade for Le'Veon Bell, though that would be crazy, it'd be insane, it'd be dope. We don't need to do that. We really do not need to do that. Because we're gonna get Leonard Fournette back. And what we're gonna do, make Leonard Fournette a third down back? Like what are we gonna do with that? You know, maybe there's some other running backs we could trade, maybe for a sixth or a seventh round draft pick, but I don't see the point in giving away something that we can use to build for the future to trade for a running back when we're gonna get our guy back this year, you know, at some point. So I think or Orleans, uh, Orleans Darqua, I think that's how you say it, uh, he used to be running back for the Giants. He was a good uh, back back then. And Jeremy Langford as well, we've worked him out, and I think that he'd also uh, kind of fill in a third down back kind of role pretty nicely. So with that being said, I don't think we should trade for a blockbuster running back. I think if we do trade for somebody, it should be somebody that's kind of in a community like Cleveland. Like <laughs> I would be all for trading for Duke Johnson. That'd be badass, have Duke Johnson. He's kind of like a TJ Yeldon. Uh, he's a receiving back that could also run the ball. Uh, he's said a couple of times he'd rather be a receiver, but, you know, uh, I'm not trying to trade for a blockbuster running back. I don't think we need one of those right now because, you know, I think regardless we're going to get Leonard back unless I miss something in that says Leonard's going to be out for the year. But we're going to have him in the postseason. We're probably going to have him late in the season. So, you know, I think everybody should just kind of calm down. We should sign a free agent running back. Or if we're going to trade for one, you know, don't trade for a big name like Le'Veon Bell. Now, if we do, and even if we do don't have him, even if we don't have him for the whole season, which again, I'm pretty sure we will have him for the season unless I missed something completely and that we're not gonna. Again, I don't think it's worth trading for a blockbuster fucking running back. I just don't. I don't think so because we're still going to have Leonard Fournette the next year. We don't really need 
a Le'Veon Bell and a Leonard Fournette. This isn't Madden, guys. We can't just do that. So that's enough of the running backs. Talked about the running backs for about eight minutes. So now we're going to be talking about the offensive line. This one's going to be a little bit qu uh, quicker. It's trash. It's garbage. They did completely awful. Blake Bortles did throw four interceptions, but there was pressure in that boy's face time after time after time after time. This offensive line, I'm, I've never seen it perform worse. This was a garbage performance from the offensive line across the board. Against the 32 second, uh, the 32 ranked defense, the 32 second, the 30 second ranked defense, 32nd ranked defense, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, we let them, we let, you know, a lot of sacks happen. We let Bortles get pressured. Uh, we threw picks. We made them look like the best defense in the NFL. And again, Chiefs fans. Don't get mad because I said you guys were the worst defense in the league. Because you were. Like, you literally were. Like, that's not like me shit-talking. That's me spitting facts. You guys were the 32nd ranked defense in the league. And you went out there against us. You dominated. You did good. Congratulations. I'm giving you credit where it's due. You guys murdered this offensive line who was supposed to be a really good unit. It didn't help that Josh Wells went out and Josh Walker can't block to save his life. Jeremy Parnell today could not fucking block to save his life. Blake Bortles was getting eight and alive back there. With that being said, the offensive line is going to get an F. F. Terrible. Terrible. I think this is the first F I've given out <coughs> in the recap video. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think there's just, they don't deserve anything better. You know, they went out there, they played like absolute fucking garbage. They were the worst group out there today. The offensive line played terrible, played awful, and they need to improve. And if the Jacks are going to try and trade for something, you know, a blockbuster trade before the trade deadline, we should be trading for a fucking left tackle. Because even when Cam Robinson's 100% healthy, I understand he's young, and, you know, he's learning the system, and he's a good guy, but he struggles sometimes too. Let's fucking trade for a goddamn stellar left tackle. Like, that's what we need right now. We need a left tackle to help this fucking team's morale. And it's just, it's not going to get done with Josh Walker. It's just not. I'll tell you that right now. I will tell you that right now. We are going to struggle a lot if this is the offensive line. Andrew Norwell even is kind of struggling. Brandon Linder, you know, he always struggles with injury. This was supposed to be a top five unit in the league. Let's get there. Let's fucking get there. But right now, I'm really disappointed in this group. And I think they did absolutely, absolutely awful. All right, the Whiteouts did awesome. Uh, everything that Blake Bortles put in their grasps, grasp they caught. And uh, they did their job. I don't know what the fuck happened to Austin Safarian Jenkins. If I missed something, if he got injured. But he, did, he barely fucking played. He didn't play like at all. Um, but, you know, James O'Shaughnessy and Niles Paul both got like nine targets apiece. Like, those, those guys are two and three. Where the hell is ASJ? Again, if I miss something, let me know. Don't call me stupid. You know, but let me know. Because I don't know what the fuck happened. ASJ just... He just wasn't out there. It was even suited up. Like what? I don't. I don't think he even made noise. Like he didn't do anything. I don't understand. I don't understand what happened. And you know the tight ends just. I don't know. I don't know. But these wide receivers, I'm gonna give them a B. I think they performed the best uh, out of anybody uh, on the offense, at least. Um, so Dante Moncrief led with 76 yards, which again uh, goes to my point where any of these wide receivers can lead uh, the Jags in receiving yards in any given week in any given game. This week was Dante Moncrief. Uh, Keelan Cole got 70 yards. TJ Yeldon got 69. Nice. And D.D. Westbrook with 56. And uh, those in garbage time, the Jags were down. That pass that Bortles made in the double coverage to D.D. Westbrook was beautiful. Uh, something that I like about D.D. too is he's small and he's fast, but he can take a hit as well. Kind of like a Wes Welker type of wide receiver. Uh, he's filled that role very, very good. And I think that, again, he still has a bright future in this league. And I think that uh, he's going to continue to get better. So the wide receivers are the best the best group today, um, as far as the offense goes. All right, yeah, we're going to be talking about the quarterback. The quarterback, Blake fucking Bortles. Inconsistent again. What did I tell you, Blake? What did I tell you in my preview? You need to stop being inconsistent for us to win. We have good Blake all the time, bro. We're winning games, dude. But why? Why do you just decide to shit down your legs so much? Like, what do you eat in the morning? Like, the, the, like, what happens, bro? Do you just roll dice? Do you just fucking say, oh, I'm going to roll the dice today. Whatever this comes up, that means I'm good. That means I'm bad. Like, I'm tired of it. I went on a whole rant in my stream. I don't know what market's at, but you can go watch it. 
where I just get big mad, dude. Like, Blake, please just be good all the fucking time. And it's it's not that I'm asking you to be good every single week, because that's hard to ask. That's hard to ask for. But, dude, you are literally good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Quit. We can't handle that. Like, I... You know, my friends always try to fucking... It's like I'm in a, it's like I'm in a toxic relationship <clears throat> with Blake Bortles. My friends always tell me, Treeb, if you guys had like a Drew Brees, an elite quarterback, anything like that, you guys are terrific. You guys are outstanding. You know, you guys are going to be going to the Super Bowl best team in the AFC, no question. But now with your with Blake Bortles, he could be bad some weeks. He should be good. You guys need to cut ties with him. And, you know, here I am, and I'm just like, no, no, we need Blake. Blake is okay, I swear I can fix him. And, you know, we can't fucking fix him, I think. I don't think we can fix him. But, you know, he's got he's to gotta manage to do something. He's got to manage to be uh, consistent in every area. But get this. He had a career high in every category this week, except for touchdowns. He had a career high in, he had a career high in interceptions with four of them bitches. He had a career high in attempts with, get this. This is why we fucking, this is one of the reasons why we lost. 61 <coughs> fucking attempts. Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles cannot throw the ball 61 fucking times. I never thought in my entire existence of being a Jags fan, I would go and I would see that Blake Bortles threw the ball 61 fucking times. That's not okay. That's not that's not it, Chief. That's not it, Chief. No. 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 No, 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 no. You can't let Blake throw. 61 fucking times and he also had a career high in yards with 440 so i guess it's cool that he went back to back weeks throwing you know a career high but i mean I, yeah yeah but he still threw four picks and one of them one of them was fucking garbage one of them he threw it right off aj can's helmet dude you are a meme blake bortles blake bortles you make a meme out of our team bro you're literally a meme like goddamn, dude come on Come on, be consistent. Be better than that. You know you are. He had a couple of money throws in garbage time, aka Bortles time. Uh, the one to DD Westbrook, like I said, that was a good throw. And also, oh, I forgot to I forgot to talk about him during the receivers. My boy DJ Chark had a game of the year. Had a couple two caught two nine routes, and those were those were pretty. And you know those throws were good as well. But again, Blake, please, please just be consistent. And everything is going to be okay, I promise. Alright, giving out the offense's final grade, and it's going to be a C. I think this is the lowest grade our offense has gotten all year. It was anemic. You know what? No, 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 no. I'm not going to be nice. We're going to give it a D plus. D plus. A D plus for this, this offense. It was terrible. It was awful. The only bright spots were the receivers. Blake, you had a career high in yards. Congratulations. You still threw four picks. Like, ah, this offense was just terrible, terrible, terrible across the board, and I think a D-plus is more than fair. All right, now let's talk about our safe haven a little bit, our defense. And though there was 30 points scored, uh, there was a couple of field goals trickled in there, and, you know, there was a, there was a pick six by a defensive lineman. Uh, I think Kareem Hunt had a rushing touchdown. Mahomes didn't throw a passing touchdown. That's why I said that. It's hard for me to say Mahomes tore us up necessarily. They had a good game, but he went 0 for 2. And, you know, Chiefs fans, if you're just going to sit there and say you're okay with your quarterback going 0 for 2, I know he has won, but 0 for 2, like, that's still not, that's not good. That was his worst game he ever played to Sean Gibson and A.J. Boye. Both gave him his first two uh, interceptions of the season, which I said A.J. was going to do. I also said Jalen was going to do, and I've been predicting that for weeks, so I need to stop doing that, and maybe Jalen will actually get an interception. But uh, to Sean Gibson, he's always good at uh, playing the ball. He's a good ball hawk safety, so that was good to see. Um, <clears throat> let's kick things off with the linebackers. Tone Smith, he was all over the field. He had 16 total tackles. Uh, he was one of the most emotional guys after the game as well. Uh, I believe he got into an altercation with Sammy Watkins at the end of the game. Um, him and Miles Jack, dude, obviously holding it down and obviously doing terrific. They're doing good jobs. Like, I mean, Telvin Smith, like I said, he was all over the field. So was Miles Jack. That being said, I'm going to give him an A. Uh, I think this linebacking, these two linebackers, again, are something special. 
Uh, they need to do something obviously bad, like hashtag actually bad, for me to really give them something below a BB plus rating because they're so talented. And every week they go out on the field, they're going to do something great. I always preach this and I always say it. Uh, so with that being said, I think definitely uh, an A for these linebackers. And I think it's going to be the only A that your boy gives out. So with that being said, um, the defensive line. Whew! I seen a tweet too. I seen a tweet. <sighs> we are like, don't call us Saxonville until further notice. I like, don't, because we are not getting after the quarterback. We are not. The mayor of Saxonville is Calais, because he's obviously the mayor. Yannick got a sack today. But I mean, like, this time last year, dude, we were just after it. We were after it, after it, after it. But we are not sacking the quarterback. And I don't know what's going on. Like, you guys aren't even paid. Like, a majority of y'all ain't even paid. Like, and you're not paid, bro. What are you doing? You're not even, like, you're supposed to be the best pass rusher in the league this year. My bold prediction was that you were going to lead the league in sacks. Bro, you're not even close. You're not even close. You have two. You have two right now. Like, come on. You're better than this. This defensive line is better than this. But on the flip side, on the plus side, uh, let's talk about Marcel Darius and Malik Jackson, who I think or have been the, uh, with the exception of Clayus Campbell, because Clayus Campbell's had a fantastic season. I think both of them have been really the uh, spotlight players as far as the defensive line goes. Marcel Darius made a play down the field, dude. That guy has helped our team so, so much in the run defense and, you know, just with the effort he gives. Like, he's one hell of a football player. And, uh... You know, that could always go overlooked because, again, he's a defensive lineman. You don't really see what he does in the run defense. But <coughs> he does well. He does good things in the run defense. And that's all I'm going to say. Uh, this defensive line as a whole is going to get a C-. minus. Uh, we need to get after the quarterback when we do. Like, that's just what we need to do. It's in the name, bro. It's literally in the name. It's in Saxonville. Come on. Better than that. Better than that. Marcel Darius, though, Malik Jackson... You boys get a B, but, you know, it's a community, so we're going to give you all a C-. minus. Did not do very good. Now, secondary, they did their job. They did their job. Deshaun Gibson with an interception. Uh, Jalen Ramsey. Okay, not Jalen Ramsey, sorry. AJ Boye got an interception as well. And Jalen Ramsey did his job. I <laughs> just, I can't get over it, dude. Jalen was shutting Tyreek down the whole game. Tyreek gets his one big fade route, and everybody's like, Oh, what about that return specialist? He's a return specialist, huh? He's fucking murdering you. He's fucking murdering you. You know, like, everybody gonna get beat at least once. Like, that's just the fact of things, dude. Like, I mean, yeah, you beat him that play. Congratulations, Tyreek. But, you know, for y'all to just go out there and say Jalen's garbage. Jalen's the best corner in the fucking league. Like, he's he's the king. He's King Ramsey, dude. Like, Y'all y'all talk too much shit about my boy, but, you know, he had a good game. Secondary had a good game. Tyler Patman as well had a good game, too. Uh, he's really good at blitzing. He's a good blitzing uh, defensive back. You know, he goes in there, shoots the gap, does what he needs to do. You know, he's, he's filled in for DJ Hayden well, and I still stand by the fact that I said that literally, like, anybody could come in and play this nickel corner position and be successful because, uh, you know, Tyler Patman's doing just that. So as far as the secondary goes, we are going to be giving them a B. We're going to be giving them a B. B for the secondary. Now let us give us the, now let me give you guys, wow, the defense's final grade, the defense as a whole is going to be getting a B. I think they did all right. I think this defense is really was the bright spot of the game. Um, a lot of the scoring that happened was kind of fucking Blake Bortles' fault. Like, four picks, man. And, you know, just the momentum. The momentum, Blake Bortles. I shouldn't be talking about you in the defensive section. But I still think this defense played well. I think they played to their strength. I think, again, everybody did their job. So, again, we're going to be giving the defense a B for a final grade. Now it is time for my favorite time of the week, your favorite time of the week, everybody's favorite time of the week, players of the week, and I realized that I did not talk about special teams uh, throughout that whole process, but nonetheless, there really wasn't much to talk about, and the special teams player of the week is going to be Logan Cook. Logan Cook, again, continues to prove why he could be a franchise punter, franchise punter, because he keeps pinning guys back deep um, and giving them bad field position to work with. 
Uh, so yeah, Logan Cook, definitely special teams player of the week. As far as the offense goes, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care what you guys say. TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon's his offensive player of the week, and it's hard to argue otherwise for anybody else. I mean, Dante Moncrief had a decent game, but TJ Yeldon had the most all-purpose yards rushing, and he was second and third in receiving yards, and he's a running back. So he had over 100 yards all-purpose. And as of right now, boys, TJ Yeldon is the Offensive Player of the Year. This is his third award. Once was given out to Keelan Cole, and once was, or no, once was given out to D.D. Westbrook, and once was given out to Blake Bortles. So TJ Yeldon, who a guy I was just completely, completely wrong about, is now currently, as it sits, Offensive Player of the Year. Uh, you could you could make a mark or make a statement that, you know, he's kind of won it in the weaker weeks, either when we lost or, like, the week against the uh, Giants. I think it's, he won that one. But, I mean, <clears throat> facts are facts at the end of the year, you know. Whoever retrieves Offensive Player and Defensive Player of the Year is, you know, TJ Yeldon right now, he has a big lead. Three to one to one to zeros. Goose eggs. So, TJ Yeldon, Offensive Player of the Week. As for the defense, uh, I kind of touched on, uh, you know, ah, uh, man, this is hard. There's a lot of guys that performed. I really want to give it to Marcel Darius. I think that just his impact as a whole has been awesome, and he had that one play down the field, but I don't think I can give it to him. I got to be giving it to Tobin Smith. Tobin Smith, this week's uh, Defensive Player of the Week, he led the team in tackles. He was all over the field. I think I believe uh, at the beginning I said Tobin had 16 tackles. I think he only had 13, but that's still... Still a big, huge number. So again, Telvin Smith. I think this is this is his first defensive player of the week. I'm gonna have to rewatch all these videos and tell you the leaderboard. You know, and kind of have like a leaderboard animation that like scrolls down. You know, that'd be dope. I need to do that. I need to work on that, dude. Let's go. More content from your boy. Anyway, um, yeah, Telvin Smith. Uh, and you know, if you guys have been keeping track, tell me uh, down below. I'm sure there's not anybody that actually has been, but you know, if you want to take some time, go through all the videos, see who's the player of the week, just leave in the comment section to make my job easier. That'd be appreciative. And that was my Jacksonville Jaguars versus Kansas City Chiefs week number five recap, position grades, and players of the week. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trey Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevon Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you do want a t-shirt, make sure you comment down below what design you are thinking you'd want. As well as, don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I put out six videos a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Those are straight facts. I just hit my microphone. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great day.